Carolyn, thanks very much for that update. Uh, we're going to go now to uh, my colleague Lou Dobbs, who's standing by the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Lou? Anderson, thank you very much. Uh, I'm here now with uh, Congressman Dave Weldon, who is uh, a, a great supporter and advocate of the uh, space program, a great friend of NASA's, uh, and in whose district many of the people who live and work here uh, uh, reside. Uh, Congressman, I know that you've uh, been here for some time. Your thoughts? Well, it's a tragic day for uh, the families, uh, the crew. Uh, it's a tragic day for the entire NASA and, and the entire community here at the Space Center, but it's also a tragic day for the nation. Indeed. The, the NASA Administrator, uh, Sean O'Keefe, has been briefing a number of congressional leaders, including your, yourself. Uh, already the search has begun for answers. What can you tell us about what you've learned to this point? Well, many people were very concerned about that debris that hit the uh, orbiter on launch, but I was reassured by Mr. O'Keefe and uh, his assistant, Bill Reedy, that that sort of thing has happened on many missions in the past and there was no significant damage to the orbiter. So I think we really need to let the investigative teams do all of their work and try to get some answers here. Brian Kittimore, who is the manager, as you well know, the, the director of the shuttle program, uh, focused on that issue. Uh, it, and obviously a man torn both with the loss of uh, the astronauts uh, and the shuttle, seeking already answers. Uh, the issue of uh, readings on these sensors, uh, what, was, uh, what is the best uh, information you've gotten to this point as to what was the earliest indication of what went wrong? and as specifically as you could? Uh, well, what we were told when we were briefed was that there were several sensors that had gone dead. One of them measured the pressure in the uh, tire on the landing gear. There was another sensor, I think, involving some hydraulic equipment. It went dead, and they, they tell us they don't know if the equipment was going bad or the sensor or the power to the sensor. And then there was some sort of indication uh, at the bond site between the tiles and the aluminum skin that there was uh, some temperature going up and then of course after that they lost all data the tiles being of course the the thermal thermal tiles, tiles. Uh, yeah. upon uh, re-entry to protect the aircraft the, the spacecraft uh, from uh, from the uh, high heat that's generated uh, what is what is your thought as to what this means right now I know we're all in the midst of loss we're in the midst of grief over this tragedy what are your thoughts as to what it means for the U.S. space program? Well, my major concern was the station. We have a shuttle mission uh, that was supposed to go up March 1st to the space station. I've been reassured that there's enough supplies on the station that uh, they can wait till sometime in June. Uh, we also have uh, this redundant capability with the Russians. They can go up there and bring materials and, and exchange crews. So uh, I was Aboard assured Soyuz. to aboard Soyuz or Progress vehicles. So I was assured that uh, we can keep the station going okay, and that, of course, is part of our space program. Uh, sure. But, you know, I'd like to see the shuttle return to flight safely, and, and I want to take whatever amount of time is necessary to reassure us all that it can fly safely. After the, the dreadful Challenger tragedy in 1986, <clears throat> it was years before the shuttle's return to space flight. Right. What is your best assessment now? Well, I'm hoping it won't be years. Uh, I'm hoping that we can put the resources behind investigating this, that we can get answers fairly quickly and put the uh, best minds behind uh, the necessary changes that have to be made to make sure it doesn't happen again. And hopefully it will not be, uh, I think it was 32 months last time, and hopefully it won't be that long. Congressman Dave Weldon, we thank you very much. I thought it was a very difficult day for you. It sure has been. Congressman, Good thank to you very you. much. Now back to you, uh, my colleague Anderson Cooper in Atlanta. Anderson? Lou, thanks very much. We're going to go to Kelly Wallace, who's standing by in Jerusalem, as she has been reporting for us throughout the day. Uh, Kelly, obviously, reaction there to the, the death of uh, Columbia uh, space shuttle uh, astronaut Ilan Ramon, the first. Israeli astronaut uh, chosen to, to fly on the space shuttle. Uh, wh what sort of reaction are you hearing? 
Well, Anderson, Colonel Ramon's experience was viewed by many Israelis as a ray of hope after months and months of violence. So as you can imagine, his tragic and sudden death hitting this country very hard. The latest information, we are told there will be a special tribute for Colonel Ramon at the Sunday cabinet meeting, of course, headed by Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon. The U.S. ambassador to Israel will be there as well. Colonel Ramon really was a hometown hero, becoming the first Israeli astronaut to go into outer space. He's 48 years old, spent his career in the military, fought for Israel in two wars, also took part in the mission, the bombing mission of a nuclear reactor under construction in Iraq in 1981. So throughout Israel today, people remembering him. He is the son of Holocaust survivors as well. And so many Israelis saying he is a symbol for Jewish people all over the world. Well, Kelly, he had also brought uh, a, a drawing that was uh, made by a young uh, man in, uh, in, in one of the death camps. Um, tell, tell me about that. Exactly, Anderson. He took with him to space a drawing from a 14-year-old, a pencil drawing, a 14-year-old Jewish boy who was killed during the Holocaust. So he took this with him to space. Obviously a very powerful moment, being the son of Holocaust survivors, but a very important symbol really to Jewish people all over the world. And we understand also, Anderson, that Colonel Ramon was not really a very religious man. He was more of a secular man, but he did want to follow certain Jewish traditions in space. So he observed Shabbat, the Jewish Sabbath, and also observed kosher traditions while he was in space. And that was another important symbol. He knew this was a big step, really, obviously, the first Israeli astronaut in space. And so he wanted to take the Jewish heritage there as well. Anderson. And that, and that he certainly did. We're running pictures from a documentary that uh, we actually spoke to the director of the documentary shortly ago, a documentary made about Colonel Ramon that he was still uh, making uh, really for the last four years. Also, Kelly, I, I also have a, a quote which I, I read from the, uh, the Associated Press that our, a friend from high school said that Colonel Ramon had sent her emails from space talking about, quote, the divine happiness of looking at Earth. And this woman says that uh, he wrote that he'd like to keep floating in space for the rest of his life. Um, obviously someone who uh, has been highly motivated to get into this space program. He became an astronaut in 1997 and he's been living in Houston with his family ever since. Isn't that right? Exactly. In Houston with his wife Rona and his four children as he's been training there. And the Israeli ambassador to the U.S., Danny Ayalon, saying earlier in the day that his family really enjoyed being there, going to schools in Texas and enjoyed the experience. And just going back, though, to uh, talking about Colonel Ramon, you know, it has really struck a big chord for the entire community, the entire Israeli public. And uh, as we've been saying throughout the day, many people, I was here, Anderson, and there was tremendous coverage when he lifted off into space. The front page of every newspaper, on every Israeli television station, and after weeks and months of violence, it was viewed as one piece of really good news after lots of bad news. And so again, it is hitting people so hard tonight. Sadness from every part of this country. We're Anderson. actually we're actually playing some of that video right now of, uh, of Colonel Ramon showing the drawing uh, made by the 14-year-old boy in a concentration camp, uh, a drawing that he carried with him in space, which was very important to him to bring, and which he no doubt had with him today um, as, as the, uh, the Columbia uh, came to it, its terrible end. Um, as, as you walk on the street, I know you've got some sound bites from some people. What, what sort of things were people saying, uh, or, or if you want, you can just play the sound bites. What, what, what were people saying to you on the street? Well, I don't know if we have the sound bites available. If we do, we can run them. People were saying everything from, again, it was a first step for an Israeli, a Jewish man. People shocked. One woman, I thought, really said it all, a woman in Tel Aviv who said, nothing seems to go right in this country, nothing at all. I think we have some of that sound bite uh, together. Let's take a listen. He was the first astronaut to observe Shabbat in space. He took kosher food. It, it, was, it was a real beautiful um, experience for the Jewish people. It was something that the Jewish people could be very proud of. Um, we were all so proud of of um, Eli Ramon and the whole and the whole team. I was shocked, you know, and I'm sorry about everybody, not only about Elan, but everybody. It's a, it's a shame.